Welcome to another AMA with Kadena Project Network. In this episode, we'll be speaking with the team from Kadena Mining Club. This conversation was recorded on August 26, 2022, live on Twitter Spaces. The views and expressions in this AMA do not represent the views of KPN directly and are not to be considered as financial advice. Please make sure to do your own research on the projects presented. Also, make sure to follow our account to be alerted of new uploads. Now, let's get started. Enjoy. Welcome, everybody, to another AMA with Kadena Project Network. Today, we have the Kadena Mining Club with us. I'm sure most of you guys have uh, know all about Kadena Mining Club. They have been just blowing it up lately. Uh, they are just about to enter their second phase of minting for their NFTs. So uh, let's get right into this. We got Matthew here. So why don't we just start for some people who may not know what Kadena Mining Club is, the short run through about what you guys are all about, and then uh, go from there. Thank you. Yeah, just to keep it short, what we're doing is we're allowing everybody the opportunity to mine Kadena around the world. You know, if you, if if, regardless, regardless of where you are, where you live, what your electricity rate is, we're offering you a chance to mine Kadena in the closest way possible as to doing it in your home yourself. So your NFTs, they're not tied to a pooled group of rewards. You're, you know, you're, um, the Kadena that you earn, it's not dependent upon what we do as a company. It's dependent upon the miner that's tied to your NFT because that's what we're providing here. We're providing real Kadena mining through the power of smart contracts and NFTs. And I couldn't be happier than to be building on a network like Kadena, even though there, you know we have the exchange problem right now. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else other than here on Kadena. I'll take a small exchange problem any day over things like, say, Solana, where the whole network just stops. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> at least at least this proves this was a good proof of work, uh, proof of uh, concept, really, that no matter what, the Kadena chain kept chugging along. Right. So that's what's really important. Oh, yeah, totally, totally, totally. And it doesn't seem like anybody really lost their money either which is the best thing about it. Nobody lost their funds. That's another good thing about the blockchain, right? Everything is mutable and it's there. So it's got to go look it all up. So let's go right back to you guys are now on phase two of your uh, NFT phase. Let's just give a quick run through about what phase one entailed and what it allowed you guys to do. Great question. Yeah. So our phase one mint, we launched about, uh, two weeks ago now, we sold out in five or six days. We did 1,500 NFTs at $300 each. And the purpose of that phase one sale was to make a down payment and lock in our purchase order with Gold Shell. We have 220 KD Max planned at the moment, uh, which would enable our holders, everybody that owns an NFT, will be getting 640 giga hash of mining power each with which right now works out to be about seven or eight Kadena a month. Now, of course, that's came down a little bit in the last two or three weeks. That's came down about, you know, 10 or 20 percent in the last couple of weeks. And we know what's happening with that situation. And we are actively working to get more than 640 giga hash of mining power per NFT. Uh, but the phase one mint was very successful and very exciting, exciting, and it really enabled us to go outside of Kadena and really make a buzz, make a scene, get everybody interested in this little blockchain called Kadena. Uh, because right now we're in a bear market, and when an NFT collection, you know, like uh, like an NFT collection like ours, we're charging three hundred dollars per mint, doing half a million dollars in revenue between Founders Pass and Phase One mints. That catches the eye of a lot of really big people. So we've been introducing Kadena to a whole new range of of individuals this week, and it's been tremendously, tremendously exciting. So phase one has done a lot for us. Absolutely. Awesome. So now we're rolling now into phase two. So 
phase two will allow you guys, it's going to be more of an open mitt. Like I was assuming it's going to be a lot more than 1500 and um, it's going to be open to anyone as opposed to the first one was more of a whitelist closed mint. Is that correct? Uh, not entirely close. Very close. The, the, the phase one mint, anybody could take part if they, if they so pleased. This phase two mint is when we're actually doing the whitelist. So we did, 1500 public sale nfts before we even did the whitelist so which i think is incredible i mean the fact that we managed to do that and not even that we managed to do that but people want our product people want to mine and that it just feels amazing to be able to deliver something like that but to get back to the phase two mint uh it's about <clears throat> a little less than 8500 nfts we have 1500 nfts planned on the whitelist for 200 dollars each if you're on this call and you have whitelist with KMC, please verify your wallet address in our Discord so you can mint your NFT tomorrow at two hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred at two hundred dollars, we think that will sell out fifteen, twenty, thirty minutes maximum. We think that's going to be very, very quick. And then we're opening it up to the ETH users. You know, I mentioned we're bringing in all these new individuals to the Kadena ecosystem, um, part of very, very big groups. We're going to open it up to them. We're going to allow them to mint with Ethereum. We're going to allow them to mint with credit cards for an hour. And then after they're done, we're going to open it up to everybody. So you can mint with Kadena. You can mint with Wrapped USDC, KW USDC. You can mint with credit card or you can mint with Ethereum. So we're really just trying to provide a range of options so everybody can have a chance to get in. That's awesome. You really don't see um, a lot of uh, options like that in the Kadena sphere when it comes to minting. It's usually, you know, it's KDA, KDA or that's it. But, you know, when you guys are doing not also, uh, you're trying to bring in other communities, like you said, it's really more adopting, especially a credit card option. Like that really just opens the door for absolutely anybody, even if you are into blockchain or not, even though, Doing that, you will have to eventually set up a wallet and everything, I do assume, to receive your payouts and receive your NFT. Yeah, that's right. I mean, everything's going to be on Kadena. We would love to be able to do the entire public sale on Kadena. I mean, nothing would make me happier. But there's a few factors to that. There's the you know barrier of entry of explaining that to people. It's it's much easier if you already have ETH, just mint with ETH rather than swap it around, get Kadena. Uh, everybody will need a Kadena wallet. We're recommending a lot of people to, just to download X Wallet. We think X Wallet is the easiest to use, the most user friendly, and it's similar to MetaMask, so it's quite easy to get onto that one. Uh, so even if you're minting with credit card or ETH. You need to download X Wallet. You need to download a Kadena wallet. You need to provide your Kadena address because that NFT has to go somewhere and we can't take your money without providing you a product. That's uh, that's for sure. Like it makes complete sense. I can't, we got to have like an ad, like you order something online and they have to have an address to send it to. You know, like yeah. An mailing address. <laughs> so yeah. um, the one cool thing I do like though about the whole credit card option is that People who are could maybe be listening to this or say, you know, a friend of theirs who's into crypto has been following you guys and has been sharing your tweets and stuff, and they're interested in it, that they, this is a good way to get more people just into crypto in general, and a great way really to pull, to pull them in because they're not only going to learn how to set up a wallet and what NFTs are and how they operate, but they're going to see also a good example of what NFTs can do besides just being flashy art. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I know, I know people in real life, friends that they're just going to, they're going to buy with the credit card. They're going to buy one or two, swipe the card, download the X wallet. Now we have more people in the ecosystem and that's what it's all about. Just bringing people onto Kadena, getting people to understand the importance of proof of work, mining, and, you know, obviously Kadena, everything that has to do with Kadena. Because proof of work is under some heat right now in the international stage, as we all know, um, especially with Ethereum going over to the merge um, just next month. So 
it's important to have this kind of green aspect that we have and add the photos. You know, we have the green energy miner with the solar panel head and the nice greenery in the background and the hydroelectric dam and the water flowing. So we're trying to put a nice picture on proof of work and what mining is and what it can be and try to get rid of that notion that mining is this dirty energy intensive thing that benefits nobody because that's just absolutely not true. That's a, that's a topic I never agreed with from the beginning. It's um, because most of the people spreading the whole idea that mining crypto in general is, you know, a huge, a huge burden on the resources of society uh, need to look more into like the people who are saying this, that are ran by like, bankers and the industries like those uh the banking industry uses a more bit more power than all the miners mining all of the different cryptocurrencies in the world combined and the fact that if you actually do your research on some of the largest mining facilities in the world a lot of them are going green or working towards going green because they know a that is the future of mining a and b proof of work is going to be around pretty much forever now like it's proof of people have to realize too that proof of work in blockchain has been around for a lot longer than just bitcoin itself it was just kind of all the right pieces came together at the right time to form bitcoin but you know the whole concept of all these algorithms and all that kind of stuff it's been around for many years and it's it's not going anywhere if anything it's just going to grow uh, so, you know, definitely going green is where it's going to be. So let's learn a little bit more about uh, your facilities in general. You've probably talked about this a lot, but I always love hearing about the actual facilities and the setups that you're going to have. You've already named a few of the miners you're going to have, but let's talk a little bit more about setup. Absolutely. So 98% of the original order of miners are going to a facility um, that we have in cooperation with a company called Bitkern. So Bitkern has been in the mining game, in the hosting game, in the managing data center game for about five years now. So they have a lot of experience in managing, you know, in running this business and putting the pieces together to make sure the machines are both taken care of and, of course, kept safe. Because you know these are very expensive machines, and you don't want people to just be able to walk by and take them. Uh, so. Of course, we have that 24-hour maintenance. We have the 24-hour 24 24-hour um, surveillance and security at the facility. So the miners will be very, very safe. Um, completely renewable energy, hydroelectric energy, which is great. I mean, we just talked. We just talk, spoke about the importance of, of this and green mining. Um, so we knew we had to get after that first. And of course, the Kadena Green Mining Initiative is just around the corner, I suspect. So it's important we qualify for that. And we're also building a, a second facility where we're going to be taking about five, I think five or seven miners. We still haven't decided the exact number, five or seven miners into um, something we're building called the technology lab. And the technology lab is really our first push towards some type of innovation in this space. And we're going to be immersion cooling the miners and when we are able to immersion cool the miners you know we dump them in this dielectric fluid it's like an oil it's like a, a mineral oil you can think of it as a mineral oil and you're able to put the miners in this oil and when it's in the oil the miner can run at up to 30 degrees celsius less so the, the chips are the, the machine isn't as hot it's using less energy you get a more efficient machine and allegedly, and historically, I guess not allegedly, but historically proven machines that are liquid cooled, and not just ASICs, but um, you know anything that you'd find in a data center, the stuff that's liquid cooled actually can last longer. It also allows us to overclock the miners. Since we are decreasing the electricity use, the, the heat out of that miner, we're able to push them a little bit hotter, get the temperature back up to where if it was running under air, it would be kind of equivalent. And we're able to make more power out of that miner. So 1KD max, does 40 terahash, uh, 40 terahash of, of mining power. If we can increase that to 50%, we can get 60 terahash out of that KD max. That sounds like a really good deal to me. 
So that's the that's really we're we're really diving in on doing that, and the tech lab is being built literally as we speak. I'm pretty sure our infrastructure lead Daniel is out there right now, building away, and that's going to be complete. Probably the first week of October. That's what we're hoping. First week of October is the the estimate right now. That's awesome. Yeah, and definitely a lot of people don't think about the, the long run. Like to begin with, I'm sure immersion cooling and uh, you know going uh, hydroelectric and all that kind of stuff may have more people that are interested in hooking up solar for their mining or anything. There is a lot more upfront costs, but when you look at the long-term savings, it automatically outweighs them. Like you said, you're going to be able to push these things harder with the liquid cooling, so you're going to get more hash rate, which means more KDA, which means more ROI for uh, people buying the NFTs and stuff. So it's, you know, it's definitely worth it to go that route. And uh, it's, it, like you said, it's going to take a little bit more work and a little bit more effort and a little bit more initial setup. But, you know, in the long run, that's definitely going to be helping you out and helping everybody out. Oh, yeah. And if we if we blow up a machine or two in the process, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, I, I kind of it's not that I want to. I just kind of I really want to, you know, if we can make this machine do 100 terahash. It's like, I'll, I'll send it at 100 terahash, you know? I mean, we'll just see what happens for three months. Maybe it keeps working. Maybe they can do 100 terahash. So we're, we're really going to push it to the, to the absolute limit. I mean, that's, that's the plan. Um, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I like that idea of um, kind of having, you know, taking miners and pushing them just to see, you know, okay, if you put it in the most ideal situation, liquid cooled in a, you know, a temperature con- controlled environment and everything so that it has the maximum of chance of lasting and pushing out the most power and then just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it to see how far it can go. Mm-hmm. It sounds yeah. really exciting. Like just to see what that top hash rate really could be. Yeah. Cause then that yeah. also gives you an average that you could then cross to other machines. Yeah, that's right. I mean, of course we're not going to be doing this and then, you know, offering this to the customers when we're, when we're trying to break them, you know, that's not the product that we'll be offering. It'll be, you know, we'll find that good median, you know, where, where do we think a safe spot is that'll ensure longevity. Uh, so it's all in the matter of, of just innovation. You gotta, you gotta push things to the limit. So let's go into the future. Uh, phase two is sold out. You're completely sold out of NFTs. Things are running good. The facilities are all going. Uh, what would be next? Have we thought that far ahead? Uh, the tech lab that I was just mentioning is Q1, Q2 of next year. We think that I'll be able to roll out. And the only final thing I'll add to that is, you know, we have the hash rate, we have the immer- all that stuff. There's also going to be an art upgrade involved in that as well. So all the miners, you know, right now they're all on dry land. If you look at all 10,000, and- well, I guess some of them are on the moon. I don't know if I'd call that dry land. Some of them are on the moon, but we're going to have an immersion cooled collection as well. So not only will we get the mining benefits, but we'll get some more art and that'll be a totally different collection. So you'll be able to keep your original NFT and get a new one. Uh, Before the end of the year, there are two really fun things that we're going to be rolling out. Well, more than two, but let's just focus on these two for now. So we're not, I'm not talking for another 10 minutes. Uh, The first uh, we're implementing a burn mechanism. So if you want to take delivery of an actual Cadena miner, we're going to give you the option to burn the NFTs that equal basically the miner you want. So for example, the KD box pro, you can burn four NFTs. We'll ship you a KD box pro KD max 63 NFTs. You want to burn 63 NFTs and take delivery of a real KD max. We're going to give you the option to, if you so please. And that's great because we're actually going to be able to put miners in the hands of people all around the world, but also it's going to lower the total amount of NFTs in the collection, thus making all the others a little bit more rare and providing, you know, maybe a little more value as a collectible very, very long into the future. The second thing, or well, you have, you have a comment on that one. I don't wait. We don't, you know, I don't, we don't have to move into the next thing. So no, it's okay. It's okay. You keep going. Uh, we also are doing a, we're building a collateralized lending program. 
And we're really excited, excited to be able to do this because our NFTs are backed by something that actually makes money. So for example, if we can project that our you know, one NFT will bring in 100 Kadena annually, we can say, all right, we can give you a loan of you know, 70 Kadena, for example. You'll lock your NFT up. And then as long as you pay back the loan amount plus a little bit of interest, you will get back your NFT and you'll get back all of the mining rewards that were earned during that time. So it's a really cool way we're going to be able to actually provide liquidity for people if they need it. Um, Because, you know, that's important. It's important to be able to do that for a variety of reasons, Um, whether it be personal or there's a good deal on the market, someone wants to scoop it up. Uh, I think it'll be really fun. And the risk for us, it's not like we're just making this, it's not like we're lending out an asset that doesn't make anything. It's like these assets actually produce money. So we're able to do it and we're able to do it uh, in confidence. Now, on the, along the same lines as that, what about market resale? So if I was to, say, buy 50 of these NFTs and then sell you know, one or two of them on a secondary market, does all the rewards are tied to the NFTs and would transfer ownership to the new wallets without problem? And like if I wanted to give a couple to my friend? So right now, the rewards are all meant to be, they're all like going to be directed to the wallet that holds the NFT. And the way the reward process works is before you can start receiving the mining rewards, you have to come onto our dashboard and turn on your miner. It's just like if you ordered one in the mail. If you left it in the box, it's not going to earn you any money. So you have to come on our dashboard and turn on the miner. Once you turn on the miner, all of the rewards from that miner will will start being pointed at your wallet. And... Every We haven't decided yet if it's going to be 12 hours or 24 hours, but every 12 or 24 hour period, you'll be able to actually come on and claim your rewards. And if you want to sell your NFT, you have to unstake it to list it on the marketplace. And when those NFTs are unstaked, you're probably wondering, you know, where's the mining power from the unstaked NFTs going? That mining power is going to our company wallet, but it's not really for our company. We're actually going to be using that money for the Cadena Builders Club. And the Cadena Builders Club is essentially our commitment to helping the Cadena ecosystem grow for the next, you know, 5, 10, 15, however many years. Um, so like the Cadena Eco Grant Program, we're doing a, a little bit of a smaller thing. We don't have $100 million, but if we can do, you know, 10000 every quarter, I mean, you know, ten, five, ten, five, ten thousand for a new project starting up is game changing. So projects will be able to come to us, tell us their ideas, pitch their ideas. If we think it's a good idea and it has potential, and the founders are legitimate, we'll actually be willing to support them with real money, with real cadena. So that's really exciting, and I cannot wait until we get that really rolling after this mint. I honestly think that's uh, the most exciting thing I've heard so far. I know there's a lot of uh, (laughs) projects out there that will be jumping at that, and you'll be getting just flooded with applications and stuff of, you know, fund my NFT project, fund my NFT project. So that'll be very interesting to see. Yeah. And for, for if you know, if you're interested, and for everybody that sounds interested in this, uh, we did the Founders Pass sale. It was like our pre pre sale our pre-phase one sale, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, our Founders Pass sale. If you hold a Founders Pass, you're in the Cadena Builders Club. And we're electing a council, a group of people, to oversee the Cadena Builders Club. It's going to be part Cadena Mining Club team members. There's going to be, I think, three of us. There's going to be three other project owners. So like Damien for Cadena Life Sale, I think he'll probably be on the council. And then we're going to pick six community members as well. So it's not going to be so much KMC vetting all of these projects, although we'll probably have some influence to it, but we're really going to be leaving it up to the greater community to make these decisions, right? It's, it's going to be more what the community wants to see rather than what we as a company see. We're kind of aiming to take a bit of a step back on that one. 
I like that idea of uh, making it something so that the community gets a say on, you know, going through the projects and saying what they want to support, really, and what they are like, mm, I'd maybe stay away from that. Because there, you do get those projects in every space. It doesn't matter what network you're on. You're always going to have people that are obviously just out there for the buck and just don't want to you know, really do the work. But uh, I, I love the idea of just being able to like uh, have like a, a council of people who kind of not not really oversee the safety of the community, but uh, you know a, a trusted group of people that the community can look to for a, like a green lighting mm -hmm. kind of service. We were actually considering putting on our Kadena ecosystem website a uh, kind of a thumbs up system, like a voting system, like maybe like an up like an upvote thing on Reddit for all the different projects. But yeah. like, uh, so this you know just something that we've been kind of debating on doing because we, we, we want to involve the community more in having a say and having a, a say in those kind of things, and people you know, like having says and like looking at little highlighted thumbs up icons and stuff so <laughs> yeah, so, yeah I, could, no, I could i could get into that i like that thumbs up thumbs down bring it on bring it on kpn <laughs> yeah you never know lots of things to work on in the future that's for sure so uh speaking of uh things in the future let's talk a little bit about this crazy ass giveaway you guys got going on how much longer is that Ooh. running on for yeah, that's running pretty much until we sell all of all of our NFTs, uh, which we expect will happen within, you know, hopefully this weekend. But if not this weekend, within the next week. And we, if if it, let's say it doesn't sell out next week, we have some news coming. We can't say what it is. I, it it hurts me. It it actually physically brings me pain that I'm not allowed to announce what this is until either next week or the week after. Uh, but if you're not buying them now, you're going to be wanting to buy them uh, in a week or two once you hear what we have coming. So the, back to the question, the giveaway. Yeah, we're giving away $100,000. The grand prize is a brand new Tesla Model 3 performance. I wanted the long range, but the long range is sold out until the end of next year. So you got to get a performance. Uh, that's a $60,000 grand prize. And if you do choose the Tesla, you do get to pick the color, although I'd be kind of offended if you didn't pick KMC Blue. Uh, although uh, you are able to accept Cadena as a reward as well, or cash if you choose. So 60 k there. We have three winners are going to win $10,000 in Cadena or, um, or US dollars if they choose. And then... 10 winners will be selected to win a custom, you know, limited edition KD Box Pro, just like the one that is being ran on the Cadena Project Networks, uh, like is being ran on your Gleam campaign right now, one of those boxes. Um, and those things are so cool. Uh, if you haven't seen them, one of our most recent posts is like all 14 of them running at the same time. It, it looks miraculous. Uh, I had one question about those KD boxes themselves. Is the lo your little uh, KD Miner NFT logo guy, is it etched in or is it just a sticker? Just out of curiosity. Oh, it's it's etched in. Like, these things were professionally made by Goldshell. Like the the one the one in the picture that you were probably looking at, I did that myself. So you you noticed the clear coat was a little messed up on the front, and it, it was just a sticker. But the ones we have now, the ones that we're actually shipping out as prizes and using. These are real. They're made by Gold Shell, and you will see a hundred of them for sale on Gold Shell's website very, very soon. That's awesome. So people who uh, mine themselves already at home and may already have mining rigs and are interested in getting a couple of these with this unique logo on the side will be able to just straight up buy them. That's awesome. I, I really like that. That's kind of a, an idea of maybe merching in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we were we were thrilled when Gold Shell. You know, when we, we first started talking about this a very, very long time ago, and if you remember back in March and April, you couldn't get in touch with these manufacturers. They did not want to talk to you. But we came around and we pitched this idea and they immediately jumped on it. You know, they love the NFT. The NFT, that's our profile picture. Gold Shell absolutely loves it. So they see there's this marketability sense for them. They understand it. And they said they were willing to make these boxes for us, which is amazing. Uh, 
the, the largest manufacturer of Cadena ASIC miners built us our own custom KD Box Pro. And they don't just do this for everybody. The only other person, the only other group that they've made a custom miner for is Vosk Coin. And if you don't know who Vosk Coin is, he's by far the largest residential cryptocurrency miner on YouTube. He has over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. So it's us and Vosk that have the custom KD Box Pros. And it's just, dude, seeing them all in real life, like all running at one time, you got to go check out the video on our page. It's one of the more recent, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see the video of them all running. Let, let me see if I can get it pinned actually. I forget sometimes that we're on the spaces and I can pin things. Now this little uh, gold guy logo of yours, uh, this isn't going to be a, this exact one that you have right now is your profile pick and it's on the machine. Isn't going to be possible to be minted, right? It's uh, a one-off uh, thing for you guys. No, no, it's going to be mintable. Yeah, I'm, we're going to have to change our profile picture soon because we're not going to have the rights to this one anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's what it. I was. That's what I was thinking. Like uh, this would be a if you're going to be putting these this guy on the side of actual merch and on the side of machines and stuff, you might want to maybe get one that you can trademark and make sure that you know other people don't steal that guy and throw him on other things but i guess if he gets minted then his rights would go to that person yeah i suppose with the gold shell one it's a little bit you know finicky compared to all the others uh we, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk about that with whoever mints the ceo i mean it's not like you don't have the rights but you know you can't you, you can't come after us because it's yours now so there's gonna have we're gonna I'm going to have to talk with our, our lawyer. Our reveal is our reveal is the 2nd of September. So before then, I'm going to have to get with our legal attorney and kind of rewrite something really quickly and enter that in. That was a good reminder. That was a good thought. You, you might have saved us if the wrong person got that NFT. <laughs> so that does mean that when I mint, say, if I mint one of your NFTs, the art thing that I get, I could say then turn around and make t-shirts or whatever I want with that NFT. I'll get the rights to use the graphic. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. You can even use the CEO. You just can't sue us for using it. You know, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we are going to be partnering with a merchandise company that will actually be able to print the individual NFT. So if you mint NFT number 6,005, you can get with our partner, say, oh, look, this is my NFT, verify the wallet, we'll get it printed to you, and we'll get it shipped to you. That's awesome. Yeah, NFT art's actually becoming a big thing. I know uh, Arcade Bowl, or Kadena Bowls in their arcade section just listed a thing where you can go and this has become a big thing. We get like an art picture made that has your picture of your NFT and then like the information about it, like the number and, you know, mm -hmm. when it was minted and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so like I, I'm not one of those people that really am, am big into buying, putting my NFTs on T-shirts and stuff like that. I may throw it up as a profile picture once in a while on my Twitter, but uh, I, I do like the more artistic ones where people make art out of them. Uh, any thoughts of doing a 3D, uh, ver like these, your, your NFTs are already, you know, like pretty much GIF graphics, like they are moving and everything, but any thoughts on doing a 3D models? Yeah, you know, in terms of the art department, uh, I kind of just throw it over to, uh, to Wei our lead artist and also Dan, our animator as well. We're really excited to have Dan on the team animating all the NFTs, like you said. Um, you know, we have something planned that's not mining related. I don't really want to say too much, but it's going to just be a chance for way to kind of showcase his artistic abilities because he's been drawing these, you know, ASIC NFTs for the last six months or so now. And, he wants to get back to doing something that, you know, he's familiar with. And he is, he does do 3D stuff. So maybe it'll be, it'll be 3D. We don't know yet. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But one thing I will say is if you own the KMC, the original, like these, these NFTs, this collection of 10,000, uh, if you own these NFTs, you might, no, you will not have to pay for this next drop. But don't tell anybody. This is just for us who's on this call right now, the 43 of us. Don't let this out. <laughs> 
Oh, there you go, folks. So another more incentive because I know a lot of uh, people love the fact that when there's going to be you know multiple collections of the same kind of company or same group putting out NFTs, uh, you know that's one thing that people like. And, oh, I got in at the very start. You know? So that's really cool to hear that you're going to be offering stuff like that. So uh, let's uh, just go through a little bit uh, for, because I'm sure a lot of people have come in since then, uh, since we started. Uh, just quick run around of uh, phase two. When you guys are starting, uh, who all can get involved, how they can get involved, all your links, all that kind of cool stuff, uh, just to make sure that everyone listening can be ready for tomorrow and be ready to mint these NFTs. Because like you said, it's pro hopefully it'll go pretty quick. Definitely, I'm sure the whitelist, like you said, will go really quick because uh, those people who you know have worked for that whitelist, they're definitely going to be ready to go. So, uh, But for everyone else who doesn't have a whitelist, just so they are cr crystal clear on what their options are and what to do, why don't we just go through that quickly? All right. So, yeah. What we're doing, Kazena Mining Club, we're offering real mining, real reward, real rewards through the power of NFTs. Each NFT is a contract to buy 640 giga hash worth of mining power from Kazena Mining Club. Your miner is going to be hosted in a completely renewable facility, so no worries about hurting the environment, and of course, no worries about dealing with the loud noise and heat and uh, troubles that hosting miners at home brings you. Our phase two mint is kicking off tomorrow in about 20 hours. In 20 hours, our whitelist sale will begin, and that is Cadena only. It's Cadena and wrapped USDC only. So that's KWUSDC. Uh, just for our Cadena members, like you mentioned, some of these individuals have been here for a very, very long time. We started in March. And now it's the end of August and we're launching these NFTs. So these individuals deserve a great deal. And that's the deal we're giving them. $200 each per NFT, 1,500 NFTs. Once that's sold out, you know, like we're saying, I think very, very quickly under half an hour, the ETH allow list will open. We've been collaborating and talking with a lot of really big Ethereum groups. A lot of them are very interested in Kadena and KMC. Uh, because what we're doing is exciting. It's new. It's not your same old profile picture project. There's real utility behind this. In fact, there's a real asset that is behind each NFT. So I think that's going to go very, very well. After the ETH allow list, and one more thing on the ETH allow list, it's both Ethereum and credit cards. So you can mint with both ETH and credit cards during the ETH allow list mint 21 hours from now. After the ETH allow list, it opens up for everybody. So you can pay with Kadena, you can pay with ETH, you can pay with credit card, you can pay with wrapped USDC uh, on Kadena. So a lot of options really are just trying to give everybody a chance to get in and lower the barriers to entry to mine. Like, I don't know what else we could do uh, to make it maybe easier is not the right word, but <laughs> we're making it. Very, very easy to get a hold of one of these NFCs tomorrow. More more accessible, I guess, would be a, a good way. To... Accessible. I like it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I know, uh, like I said, it's going to be very quick as far as uh, mint outs do. Now, as far as limits, are there any limits to the amount of NFTs one wallet can buy? Yeah, for the whitelist, things are a little bit complicated. We have this whole leveling system and stuff in our Discord. Uh, you can either get you get one NFT or all the way up to 10, depending on what level you are. Uh, but for the allow list and the public sale, it's um, a maximum amount of NFTs per wallet is 100. So if per transaction, you can do 100 NFTs. But we are not setting a limit on the amount of NFTs one wallet can buy. So if someone wants to buy 1,000 NFTs, by all means, buy 1,000 NFTs. We're going to have to create a new Discord role because right now our Discord roles only go up to 200 plus. We don't have anybody that's at 500 or 1,000 yet. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe someone wants to really get in there. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no limits. No limits. 
Well, that sounds like it could get very interesting because uh, I know that with the uh, upcoming changes to Ethereum, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, Ethereum miners that are like, well, I guess game's over. I guess we had to find a new game in town. And so hopefully a lot of these people will switch over to Ethereum. Maybe the ones might, uh, you know, some other big Ethereum mining uh, things will just be like, you know, screw it. Kadena seems like a really good choice. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. You know, that is that is how Kadena Mining Club started. It was, you know, very early this year, end of last year. I recognized proof of work, uh, proof of stake was coming on ETH. You know, I was, I was a GPU miner and I wanted to get into ASICs, but I couldn't really host these big ones in my apartment. It's just unsustainable. They're too loud. They're too hot. You can't do it in an apartment. And then I realized, you know, it's really tough to get your own warehouse and buy dozens of your own machines and get it to the point where you can actually, you know, run a profitable business with all these expenses. And along that way, I noticed there were a lot of people like me that wanted to mine, but they didn't have the access to do it. And that's why we're here. That's the only reason that we're here. There is definitely a huge barrier when it comes to mining. Uh, I know I myself have looked into the possibility of mining before and the things that really hold me back are a my own electricity costs and the initial cost for setup like a lot of people can't afford to buy you know 15 20 thousand dollar miners and then have you know the setups to run them but you know think groups like you and uh, companies like you that are putting out these different options are going to bring it like you say to the masses it's going to allow someone in like some other country that you know even ones that don't allow crypto mining because of the electricity costs like there's lots of places that are starting to actually ban crypto mining because of the you know the extra strain on the system it takes and mm -hmm. also with with the cost of electricity going up worldwide pretty much everywhere like i know in the united states the cost of electricity is just starting to skyrocket and over in the eu they've been having a lot of issues with that so this gives people other options for things like that it, it just allows pretty much anyone that has uh you know a computer or a, even a, a cell phone i guess you could probably do it through x wallet on cell phone uh, to this chance to get in on this. That's right. That's right. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. I mean, you should not be excluded from being able to participate in something just because of where you live and what your electricity rate is. Um, for example, if you are interested in purchasing a gold shell KD max, let's use a gold shell KD max and using an average worldwide electricity rate for developed nations of, about 16 cents, you can save $8,000 over three years choosing to mine with us rather than buying your miner at home. Because at 16 cents per kilowatt hour, you know, the miner costs 12 and a half thousand to begin with. And after three years, you're going to end up paying another 12 and a half thousand in electric just to run the damn thing. So like you said, we're removing all of that effort of having to deal with the electricity, deal with doing it at home. And actually right now, the most cost effective way to mine Kadena is through our NFTs. If you do the math, sit down, you find out what the cost per terror hash is over time. We have the most cost effective way to do it. Nobody can beat us. And it's going to get even better. It's going to get even better. So stay tuned. Now, one thing that we have been running for the past week and a bit with you guys is our giveaway for a KD Box Miner. So if you guys did not get in, make sure there's still got a little bit of time left. We're going to be running it for a little bit longer uh, just to make sure people can get their entries in. But uh, I will like to actually let me bring up the, the timer because there is a timer on the Gleam thing of when it will end. So just quickly click on the, the giveaway here. And make sure that you guys uh, know exactly how much time we have left. Nine hours left. So there's still nine hours to get in entries. Now, you know, there's lots of ways to enter. Just click uh, first go to our Twitter page. And right at the very top, there is a link for the green giveaway. It's pinned right at the top. 
uh, just go on there. Lots of little things you can do to get lots of awesome entries. Just go through, click them all. Uh, and then we will also, I don't know if uh, everyone's been following us, but we are going to be giving away a secret code that you're going to be able to redeem that's going to get you even more entries into the giveaway, which will give you a little extra boost on everybody else, the more give chances you have to win. So kind of a, a thank you to the people who come out to the space tonight. So uh, you want to say we go ahead and reveal the code? What do you say, Matthew? Yeah, sounds good to me. And I pinned it as well. So to make it, if you know, if you need to find it, I pinned it to the top of the space. Go ahead. Let's figure it out. Who, what's the code? I, I don't even know what the code is, I don't think. <laughs> so we, we went super, super off the wall and creative with it. It is, now this is all capital letters, K-P-N-M-1-N-3-R. So it does spell out K-P-N minor, but with a 1 and a 3 instead. So just again, <laughs> just <laughs> super creative. We thought, you know, maybe it might be something people wouldn't guess right off the bat and kind of goes along with the whole computer theme of the minor and everything like that. So once again, it is all capital letters, K-P-N, M, 1, N, 3, not, or 3, R. I almost said 3, 9, 3, R. So make sure you guys go in, get all your entries left. There's nine hours left. Tell all your friends to get their entries in. Uh, I know uh, I for one, would love to win this thing. So, because, but like I said, KPN, uh, the minor itself would just kind of maybe just sit in the, as a nostalgic look at thing I won, unless I moved to somewhere where actually the next house I plan on building is going to be off grid. So maybe when that happens and I have solar panels run in my house, I'll throw a couple miners, build myself a little closet in the garage or something and throw a bunch of miners in there. I love the sound of that. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it has a collectible value of its own over time. There's, there's only going to be 114 of them. There's never going to be any more. Uh, I was recently down at the wor one of the largest cryptocurrency mining conferences in the world down in Miami, and they had a ASIC museum there. And it was actually really interesting. It went back all the way to the original, you know, ASIC machine back in, you know, 2012 or 2013, whatever it was showed the insides of them all, what they used to look like and how the innovation has came since the first one. And believe it or not, there are people out there that collect the old ASIC machines. Like they're like antiques. Uh, there was one machine, the name is blanking for me right now, but the vast majority of them arrived destroyed. Like whatever boat they were on hit some rough water and they all arrived broken. Like it wasn't packaged well. So there are very few working models of that machine left and they fetch a pretty penny compared to what they, you know, were all the way back in the day. So maybe just having it as a paperweight for a few years, it might pay off in the long run. It's, it's funny when you think about like where mining has come from and how little back in the day it took to actually mine. Like you hear the stories of people that used to mine Bitcoin on their GPUs, you know, just with a basic, gaming computer like one I have right now and just you know we're getting like a hundred bitcoin every day and stuff like that just yeah. to think of where where it's become and like I couldn't imagine being being in that back in the day and you know having all those coins right now you'd just be yeah. laughing you know? yeah It'd be absolutely ridiculous yeah it certainly evolved uh they had they had an old satoshi not, not, not Satoshi, excuse me. They had like the original Apple computer there. You know, the old big boxy one with the terrible screen. And it said, uh, it was like estimated time to mine one Bitcoin. And it was like, I don't know, like 10 million years or something. Because they'll just <laughs> never get it done. <laughs> well, you got to realize, like a lot of people don't realize that those early computers, um, there's more memory in one little square inch of your cell phone probably than there is in all of those computers. Uh, that's, that's another thing, you know, like these ASIC miners that you could be buying now um, could, you know, in a year from now, 
maybe come out with one that does double the hash rate and things like that. So it's good to know though, that people that don't have to worry about that, that when they buy the NFTs with you guys, it's, you know, it's as long as you hold that NFT, you're going to be getting your KDA and uh, that you guys will replace miners when need. Now, what if like say in the future, um, KDA falls off and doesn't become the best profitable coin on the Kadena system. Would you ever consider changing coins on the same algo? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, right now, there currently are not any other coins on the Blake 2S algorithm. So perhaps we have to make our own if Kadena did not uh, you know, turn into the wonderful thing that I think a lot of us on this call are confident that it will turn into. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be tough if Kadena just does never becomes anything, right? That'll be very bad for our business because our business is mining. And like, I, like I've been saying, buying our NFTs are just buying Kadena ASIC miners. So it would be the same situation if you at home were to buy, you know, a a KD box or a KD max, and then Kadena were to disappear, the outcome is the same. That's just, that's just one question I always ask all of these like mining facilities, because one thing I know about miners is it's not some people that they're loyal to a certain, you know, I only mine this coin because, you know, they see a future in that coin and they want to make sure that, you know, when that coin does pop off, that they have the largest amount that they could possibly have of that mm -hmm. coin. But then I know of the majority of miners, it's just about bottom line profit. You know, if there's a more, if something was to pop up on that algorithm that for some reason, like, let's just throw a crazy thing out there. Let's say like since Samsung just announced that by 2023, they're gonna have their own cryptocurrency exchange which blows my mind um, that let's say they also come out with their own coin and they decide to build on the same algorithm. Now, if something like that was to happen, that's, you know, totally hypothetical. Would that consider changing your mind? I, I think it would. Yeah. Ultimately, you know, we have to deliver yeah. a product to our <laughs> customer and, but you know, honestly, it's, that's not really our decision to make for our customers, right? I think if that were to occur and it were to be a flick of a switch where you could switch between Kadena and this brand new Samsung cryptocurrency that you're talking about, there would literally be no reason we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to allow our NFT holders to do that because it's their machine. They own the chips. We'd, we'd probably have to figure out a, you know, a manager plan to do that, but there's no reason we couldn't. And then, you know, from the company standpoint, obviously we need to make money so we can, pay our expenses yeah we'd switch to the other coin but you know we'd leave that decision up to the group what what, what they want to do it's it's not really our decision to make for them i like that idea of you know if something was to pop up that the people who do own the nfts could possibly come to you and say hey you know let's uh, switch my miners over to this because, you know, like yeah. you said, you're pretty much buying a portion of the miner itself. So now that's uh, pretty much all the questions I had for you today. I know you're a very busy guy and probably have another space to, to move on to from here. Because it seems like today has just been a nonstop uh, circle of, of uh, AMAs and spaces for you. But uh, if anyone listening has any quick questions they want to get in, uh, like I said, make sure you guys go in and get your entries in on the giveaway so that one of you can hopefully win one of these miners. It uh, is an awesome opportunity. And also make sure to go to the Kadena Mining Club uh, Twitter and join in their giveaway to possibly win a crazy Tesla or a bunch of money. So lots of lots. Lots of awesome opportunities. And don't forget also for our giveaway for the KD Miner, the secret code for extra giveaways. Once again, all capital letters, KPNM1N3R. So that's KPN Miner with a 1 and a 3 as the I and the E. So unless anyone has any questions, I'd like to thank Matthew for stopping by. This has been an awesome, absolutely awesome space. And I absolutely make sure everyone go and check them out. And if you can, get in on some mints. It's not letting me. Oh, there we go. It wasn't letting me unmute myself. Hey, before we go, though, 
Is there any information that you could share about what KPN is innovating on right now? I know Michelle showed me sh- showed me something a few weeks ago. I'm wondering, do you have any alpha for us? I mean, we've talked about KMC this whole time. Anything to share? Uh, we're 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 still a little bit too early early alpha for that stuff to be coming out with, but uh, we're we were glad to be able to share that with you guys, and hopefully we can definitely work together in the future on something together. But uh, I, I will say that it's definitely we are working on some things that are much needed in the Kadena ecosphere. So definitely keep your uh, eyes and ears open to uh, our social accounts for over the next couple of weeks, maybe a month or two. So I, I can say about that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm looking, I'm certainly looking forward to it. I thought it, the, the UI was great. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, yeah, I'll shut up now. I'll shut up. <laughs> but uh, thank you everybody. Thank you seriously for taking the time to listen to me speak for the last hour or so uh, feel free to jump into our discord dm us on twitter if you have any questions if you need any help getting your cadena you know getting cadena onto into x wallet or getting kw usdc get in our discord ask some questions we're happy to help our big mint is tomorrow august 27th on saturday it starts at 1 p.m eastern 1500 whitelist spots are going first then we're opening up to the eth allow list where ETH and credit card payments can be made. And then the public sale will follow one hour after that. You can pay in KDA, KW, USDC, credit card, and Ethereum. So definitely come check us out. It's going to be a fun day. We're going to have a space tomorrow talking about it during the mint. It's going to be a big old party. So I hope you all can join us along. And if KPN wants to join us tomorrow, feel free to jump in. Come say hello. Uh, any Cadena projects. I see Mint It here. Any of you guys come into our space tomorrow during the party, come up, talk about your project, share with us what you're building. We all definitely want to hear it. Awesome. Well, thank you much, everyone, for joining us today. It's been an absolutely amazing space. And thank you again for Cadena Mining Club for joining us and laying out some very awesome news. So, uh, Thank you very much for joining everyone and have a great evening. That wraps up another amazing AMA. Thank you for listening. Here at KPN, we strive to bring an open platform for projects being built on Kadena to present themselves to the community. Please ensure to do your own research on each project before investing. Also, make sure to follow us on our social media from Twitter to subscribing to our weekly newsletter. All the links can be found directly on our SoundCloud profile page. Thank you very much for listening and take care.